Good morning class, it's Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. This is our instructional video. So today in math, you're gonna be learning about parallelograms. It's another type of shape and you'll have a question about it on your Google quiz on Google Classroom. In reading, we're gonna be reading that same article called Can We Float Like Ducks? You'll also have a question about that on your Google quiz, which is on your Google Classroom. In writing, you'll be continuing to work on the middle section of your celebrity dinner party, working on that rough draft. In science, we're gonna be reading about the animal group called fish. You're gonna be reading a book about that on Epic, and then you'll have a question about it on your Google Classroom on your Google Quiz. For prep, remember we're having the same prep all week. We're gonna be working with computers, and I want you to try green screen out. So upcoming assignments, make sure that you finished your book for your book movie project. Make sure that you finished your movie for your book movie project and start your digital presentation using the Book Creator app. That's going to be due on April 10th. And again, we've got an example of what this project should look like. So if you remember, first page of my book should let me know what the title is. The next two pages of my book should look pretty much identical as far as the content's concerned. Main character will be Cinderella, or sorry, my main character is Cinderella, but I just want to know who your main characters are, who your minor characters are, the setting, which is where your story is happening, and when, the problem in your story, the theme, which is the lesson that you learned, or possibly a lesson that the character learned, and the summary. The last page of your book creator is going to have one circle that tells me about the book, another one that tells me about the movie, and in the center you're telling me the things that are the same. Today we're going to learn about parallelograms. So we're going to need to know a few words, some that we learned last week. So one of the words that we're gonna to have to know today is a polygon. Remember, we reviewed this yesterday as well. A polygon means a many-sided shape. So again, that could be a square with four sides, a triangle with three sides, a hexagon with six sides. As long as it has a lot of sides, it's a polygon. We also need to know the word quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a type of polygon and it only has four sides. Sides are the edges of a shape, closed, means again that all the sides of the shape connect with no openings and parallel. That's when two lines run next to one another but they never ever cross. So for example with the shape that we have here I can see a set of parallel lines right there. These two lines could go on and on forever and ever and they're never going to cross one another. They are parallel to one another. All right so a parallelogram is a polygon. Like we just said on the last side, polygon means it's a many-sided shape. And this, poly, this parallelogram definitely has more than one side. It has one side, two, three, and four. So since it has many sides, it's called a polygon. This parallelogram also has four sides in particular. And since it has four sides, it's called a quadrilateral. Quad means four. A parallelogram is a closed shape. So again, what I mean by it being a closed shape is that all of these edges here all connect with one another and there are no empty spaces. Okay, and the last thing to make something a parallelogram is it must have two sets of lines that are opposite one another and parallel. And we learned yesterday that opposite means they're kind of across from one another. So we're gonna look at the two sets of opposite lines and see if they're both parallel. So we're gonna go ahead and take two different colored highlighters so we can check this out. So one set of parallel lines that I'm seeing on this shape in particular, let me grab another color here, are right here and right here at the bottom. I can see those lines, they kind of remind me of the slide we saw last week of the railroad tracks. They're just kind of running next to one another. They're opposite each other, because one's up here and one's down here, they're across from one another. But they're just running along one side, alongside one another and they're never ever going to cross. The other set of parallel lines that I have here um, is going to be right here. So I see one line here, I see another line here, 
That's a set of lines there that are opposite from one another, again, meaning across. And you can see these lines would go on forever and ever and never cross each other. So this indeed has two sets of parallel lines. One of those sets would be this set here, and the other one would be this set here. So this is a parallelogram because it has two sets of lines that are opposite from one another, meaning across, and they're parallel. They never ever run into each other. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting. We're gonna look at the similarities and differences between parallelograms and trapezoids, which we learned about yesterday. So, both of them are polygons right here. They're both many-sided shapes. So again, if I'm looking at my examples here, this one has four sides, and this trapezoid over here also has four sides. So they definitely both would be considered a polygon. They have many sides, but also quadrilateral because they both have four sides. They are both also closed shapes. The reason being is because all of the lines or the sides of the shape all connect with one another. There's no empty spaces. They all connect, okay? So those are the things that they have in common, very similar. But one thing that's a little bit different that we might be noticing is with the parallelogram we learned today, it has two sets of parallel lines, two of them. Well, that's a big deal. And our trapezoid over here, he only has one set of parallel lines. So that's really the major difference with a trapezoid versus a parallelogram. The trapezoid, if we remember from yesterday, these opposite lines were parallel. They'd run on forever and ever and never touch each other. But these ones here eventually do cross and those were considered perpendicular. So to be a trapezoid, you only have to have one set of parallel lines. But to be a parallelogram, you have to have two sets of parallel lines. And that's the only difference. So here's where it gets really interesting. So a parallelogram is polygon. We agreed that. It's got multiple sides. It's also a quadrilateral. It's got four sides. It's closed. All the sides connect. But here's the interesting thing. It is also a trapezoid. How? Well, if we remember from looking over here, to be a trapezoid, I only have to have one set of parallel lines. Well, guess what? A parallelogram does have one set of parallel lines. It actually happens to have two, but it has at least one. So since it has at least one pair of parallel lines, a parallelogram is also a trapezoid. Mind blown. Okay, guys. So reading today, you're going to go back to that article called Can We Float Like Ducks? When you're finished, remember to answer the questions on your Google quiz that are located in your Google Classroom in the folder Remote Learning Quizzes. Your answers on yesterday's quizzes were awesome. You guys did a fantastic job of remembering to restate your question, put in your own personal answer and some proof, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Also, just a reminder if some of these videos get tricky for you to remember everything afterward, right now would be a great time to pause this video, go to your Google quiz, and answer your question about math, and also your questions about the article on ducks, and then come back to this video. All right, for science today, you're gonna to be reading a book on Epic called Fish. This book is in your biology review library on Epic, and it looks like this. You will have to answer one of those checkbox questions about fish on your daily quiz on Google Classroom. Those questions can be a little bit tricky, and you have to take your time to read the book very carefully. This would be another good time to go ahead, pause this video, go read the book, answer the questions on your Google Classroom, and then come back to this video. I'll be here. All right, guys, so writing. Today, you're gonna to continue to work on that middle part of your celebrity dinner party essay. Remember, this should include the problem. I put this plot diagram on here that we talked about and I showed you yesterday. So remember, we have here, um, they use the proper term that we don't actually. So here where it says exposition, we don't use that word in our class, we use the word beginning. And in our beginning, we should have characters. And we should also know the setting or where the story is taking place. Up here in the middle, this climax, this is where we should have a problem. 
And then down here will be our ending, but we're not quite there yet. Today we're going to be spending a lot of time again here in the problem. Just as a reminder, in case you've forgotten, I was just going to review my story with you to kind of help you out. So in the beginning of my story, I fa we found out that I was going to go celebrate my birthday at the Golden Corral. And that I had invited a few people. John Cena, Abraham Lincoln, and Vincent Van Gogh. That was all established at the beginning of the story, so I kind of knew what my setting was and who my characters were and why we were there. That's the important part for a beginning of, an, of a narrative. In the middle is the problem. So here I put a couple pictures to remind you of the problem. Remember, I had John Cena and Abraham Lincoln having a wrestling match at the Golden Corral. In the middle of this wrestling match, remember, I was still getting my meal over at the buffet when someone threw a knife from the crowd and accidentally took out Vincent's other ear. It was crazy. That was our big problem because now my whole birthday had been ruined and Vincent had lost his ear. So the remainder of my essay is going to be figuring out what happens after all this crazy stuff happens. You guys came out with some awesome problems and ideas in class. Try to remember that and make sure that that's what you're writing about today. All right, at the day today, I would like you to spend 15 to 30 minutes on Freckle each day this week. See if you can pass off a whole section. Remember on your daily quiz, you're going to have to remember what section you worked on. So take note of that while you're working on there. For prep, remember Monday through Thursday this week, we're going to be working on green screen. Again, most of us didn't get to travel for spring break, so I want you to think about a place you wanted to go or that you were going to go and see if you can figure out how to use green screen to make it appear that you went and visited. Post those up on Seesaw. All right, guys, so this is all I have for you today. I hope you have a fantastic day. Um, many of you heard some of the announcements on the news. I'm hoping that we get to continue to do our online learning. I, will, I miss seeing you guys every single day. I've told you a million times that I love my job. And the best part about my job is being able to be in the classroom and see you each day. Learn together and laugh together. And I really miss that part. It's nice getting to make all these videos. But I don't get to interact with you as much as I like to. And you guys are the best part of my job. So I miss you guys. And I hope you're well. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.